While you're reading this, Tesla assembled another Model 2, one every 33 seconds at Giga Texas in 2026, over 90,000 cars monthly. Traditional automakers celebrate one per minute. Tesla does it six times faster with fewer workers and robots. How? Here's the terrifying part. This isn't their final speed. Musk says they can go faster. When Model 2 hits streets at gas car prices, what happens to legacy automakers? Let's dive right in. So how does Tesla pull off this 33-second miracle? The answer isn't more workers or longer shifts. It's actually the opposite. They removed 450 robots from the production line. Yes, you read that right. Fewer machines. Faster production. That sounds impossible until you understand what's really happening inside Giga Texas. The secret is a monster called the Giga Press. This isn't your average factory equipment. It's a 50,000-ton aluminum casting press that does something revolutionary. It replaces 400 separate welds and parts with a single molded piece. One press, one piece, seconds of work. To put that in perspective, traditional car manufacturing requires dozens of robots positioning and welding panels together, generating heat, waste, and inevitable human error. The Giga Press eliminates all of that in one brutal squeeze. But here's where Tesla went completely insane with the Model 2. The new Giga Press doesn't just make one chassis piece per cycle, it makes five. Five complete chassis structures in the time it used to take to make one. When you do the math, that's the difference between being competitive and being unstoppable. And that 40% reduction in structural costs? That's not coming from cheaper materials or cutting corners. It's pure engineering efficiency. Think about what this means for a second. Every legacy automaker is stuck in a system where complexity equals quality. More parts, more welds, more processes supposedly means a better car. Tesla just proved that's completely backwards. What if the real innovation isn't adding more? It's eliminating everything unnecessary. Now let's talk about why this matters beyond just speed. The Model 2's entire chassis is cast as a single piece, front and rear sections that connect to the battery pack in the middle. This creates what engineers call a structural battery pack design. The battery isn't just sitting in a box anymore. It is the structure. It's part of the car's skeleton. This does three things simultaneously. First, it drops hundreds of kilograms of redundant structural reinforcements. Every gram matters in an EV because you're already carrying heavy batteries. Second, it increases rigidity dramatically. A welded chassis has flex points at every joint. A cast chassis is essentially one continuous piece of metal. No weak spots, no torsion, no vibration. Third, it lowers the center of gravity because the battery sits directly integrated into the floor. The result? A car that handles like something twice its price, accelerates without wasting energy on structural flex, and achieves range numbers that seem impossible for its battery size. Tesla isn't just making the Model 2 faster to build. They're making it objectively better to drive while spending less to manufacture it. And this is where traditional automakers face an existential problem. They can't just copy this. Their factories are designed around the old method. Hundreds of robots, thousands of welds, complex assembly sequences that took decades to optimize. To switch to Tesla's method, they'd have to demolish their factories and start over. How many can afford to do that while Tesla's already selling cars at prices they can't match. Here's the part that should keep every auto executive awake at night. All this technology, all this efficiency, is being deployed to hit one specific target. A $25,000 electric car that doesn't suck. Not a golf cart with doors. 
not a compromise mobile with a 100-mile range. A real car that drives like a Tesla, with autonomous driving hardware included. The interior is where Tesla made the brutal cuts necessary to hit that price. No heated seats as standard. No premium audio with 10 speakers. No panoramic glass roof. Fabric seats instead of synthetic leather. Basic sound insulation. It's Spartan, but here's the critical detail. It's still modern. The massive center touchscreen is still there. The minimalist dashboard is still there. All the cameras and sensors for full self-driving are still there. Tesla understood something crucial. The people buying a $25,000 car don't need luxury features. They need transportation that doesn't cost them $50 every time they pass a gas station. They need a car that can potentially earn money as a robotaxi when they're not using it. They need the basics done exceptionally well, not everything done adequately. But this raises an uncomfortable question for the industry. If Tesla can deliver a compelling EV at $25,000 with margin to spare, what's everyone else's excuse? Why are other affordable electric cars still hovering around $35,000 to $40,000 and offering less technology? The answer is becoming painfully obvious. They can't manufacture efficiently enough to compete. Look at the Model 2's exterior and you'll notice something strange. It doesn't look like a Tesla. No aggressive front end, no sleek sedan profile. It's a compact hatchback with four doors, short overhangs, and purposefully bland styling. This isn't an accident. This is Tesla admitting something important. Not every car needs to be a statement piece. The Model 2 is designed for urban chaos, tight parking spots, narrow streets, daily commutes where aerodynamics matters more than aesthetics. The higher, more angular headlights give it a younger look, but nothing screams, look at me. The truncated rear end maximizes interior space while minimizing drag. The doors open wider at specific angles to make entry and exit easier in cramped garages. Even the lack of a traditional trunk makes sense in this context. Tesla's data shows most city car owners rarely use full trunk capacity. Why add manufacturing complexity and cost for a feature that gets used occasionally? Instead, they optimized every centimeter of interior space where people actually sit. And here's the fascinating part. This boring-looking hatchback has a drag coefficient that rivals sports cars. Smooth underbody panels, absent side moldings, carefully sculpted curves that you barely notice but make a massive difference in energy consumption. Every design choice was made to save electrons, not win beauty contests. Let's zoom out and look at what this really means. By 2026, Tesla isn't just selling cars anymore. They're commoditizing electric vehicles. When you can produce 90,000 Model 2s per month at Giga Texas alone, you're no longer a boutique EV maker. You're a mass market manufacturer operating at a scale that crushes competitors through pure volume economics. Other automakers spent the last five years talking about their EV transition plans for 2030, 2035, 2040. Meanwhile, Tesla built the factories, developed the technology, and started printing affordable EVs faster than anyone thought possible. The gap isn't closing, it's widening. Every month that passes, Tesla's manufacturing advantage compounds while traditional automakers burn billions trying to catch up to where Tesla was three years ago. And this is before we talk about the elephant in the room. Autonomy. Every Model 2 rolling off that line has the hardware for full self-driving. That means potentially millions of robo-taxi-capable vehicles hitting the streets in the next few years. When that software reaches true autonomy, every Model 2 owner suddenly has an asset that can generate income. Can Ford offer that? Can GM?
in Toyota? The Model 2 isn't just a cheap electric car. It's the foundation for Tesla's robo-taxi network. It's a Trojan horse that looks like humble transportation, but could fundamentally reshape how cities function. And it's being manufactured at a pace that makes competition mathematically impossible. The automotive industry just had its blockbuster moment, and most companies don't realize they're blockbuster yet. Tesla didn't just innovate. They've created a manufacturing moat so wide that jumping across it requires rebuilding your entire company from scratch. The Giga Press technology, the structural battery integration, the extreme automation, the software first approach. You can't bolt these onto existing factories. You have to start over. And here's the final twist. While everyone's focused on the Model 2's $25,000 price tag, they're missing the real story. Tesla's cost to manufacture this car is probably closer to $18,000 to $20,000. That's insane margin room for future price cuts, feature additions, or just pure profit. When your competitors are struggling to break even on EVS and you're making comfortable margins on your cheapest model, you've already won. The question isn't whether the Model 2 will be successful. At 90,000 units per month, from just one factory, with Giga Shanghai and Giga Berlin potentially adding their own production lines, we're looking at potentially 3 to 4 million Model 2s annually within a few years. The question is, what happens to everyone else when affordable EVs aren't coming soon anymore? They're here, they're better, and they cost less than a Camry? So what happens to everyone else when Model 2 hits the streets? They're already too late. By the time legacy automakers build profitable $35,000 EVs, Tesla's selling better ones for $25,000 at impossible volumes. That's checkmate. But here's what most miss. Model 2 isn't the end game. It's infrastructure. Every car is a potential robo-taxi, grid node, and upgradable platform. When summoning an autonomous Model 2, costs less than owning gas cars, personal ownership collapses. This is one factory. What happens when Shanghai and Berlin add production? When Giga Press spreads beyond automotive? When this manufacturing revolution transforms other industries? The question isn't if Tesla wins, it's how fast everything changes and who survives. Will traditional automakers adapt? Or are we watching the biggest industry collapse since Kodak? Drop your thoughts. This is tech revolution. We break down the innovations reshaping our world. For the latest developments, you know where to find us. The future's rolling off the line every 33 seconds.